Welcome to Victorious Living with Pastor Charles Cowan. Now let's join Pastor Cowan and the congregation of Faith is the Victory Church. This is Victorious Living. All right, I'm going to talk to you this morning and share with you on, on, a, on a simple subject in two words that I have titled it, Why Pray? Amen. Why Pray? Because sometimes I've talked to people and I've even gone through the process over the years myself that sometimes people can come to the place and they can think, well, there's not any need for me to pray. I've not seen God do anything. I've not had him to answer my prayers. And so why pray? And so it's easy if, if a person falls into that frame of thinking, hopefully none of us here today do, but if a person falls into that frame of thinking, they come then when they have a need, they, they're looking for someone else to do their praying for them. That's right. When God tells us that we as his children are to pray, Amen. he tells us to pray without ceasing. That's right. Amen. So the question is, why pray? If I haven't seen any results, why pray? If I'm not getting any results, why pray? If God seemingly has not answered my prayers, why pray? And so as long as the big why, the big why, the big why is, is in the forefront of our thinking, then prayer is, is automatically displaced. It's not necessarily disbelieved, but it is displaced where our lives are concerned. Jesus made this statement, and you don't have to turn there, in, in, when, in Matthew's writings, uh, Matthew's writings in the 21st chapter of Matthew, so the 22nd verse, and he said it this way, and all things, whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believe it, you shall receive, or the word receive, you shall lay hold of. Amen. That's what Jesus said. He said, in all things, whatsoever you shall ask in prayer. Now you have to keep the context of all of that because sometimes you know you can you can, run, uh, you can run any subject in the Bible off to one side or the other. Amen. And so if we, if we look at this word whatsoever, we can think up a lot of whatsoevers. That's right. But he, it, it's in the context of what he has done in Christ for us. Yes. And what the writers of the scriptures has, has shared with us in their writings what is available to us by promise from God. So you have to keep that in its context, lest, you know, if you get way, way out there, you know, you could, uh, a person could ask, you know, and just think up a lot of things. But Jesus said, in all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer. Believing, I, know, I want you to notice in this, I didn't intend to go to this verse of scripture just other than to, just to read it. And all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing. Notice here, he links prayer with your faith. Believing is the word in this, in this particular scripture. It is the word listed for faith or believing. And so he links faith and prayer and receiving all together. So it's not just praying, it's believing when we pray. Amen. And it's not just believing when we pray, it is believing that we have what we have prayed about or we have laid hold on it with our believing. We've laid hold on it with our faith. And so sometimes it can come like this. Well, I ask God and I'm just waiting to see if he's gonna do something. I prayed and I asked him, and uh, kind of been waiting for a while and just kind of waiting to see what's going to show up. Well, see, that, that in itself is surrounded or immersed in doubt Amen. because we don't really know. We, that, that's the sound of we don't really know what God's going to do. 
We don't really know if he heard us, number one. We don't know if he'll respond to us, number two. And we don't know if we're going to get what we asked for. So all of that is immersed in doubt and unbelief. And notice that Jesus uses the word believing when he made that statement. He said, what things so ever. So here's, here's the point. I'm, I'm way off my subject right now. But here, here's the point. God has outlined in his word what is available to us through Christ. And so we have to know the will of God. Not knowing the will of God concerning what God has done for you or for us will cause us to ask in doubt. Or can cause us to ask in doubt. We ask it because the Bible teaches us to ask and uh, we know that it's in the Bible uh, and we've read some of the promises in there, but there's a little bit of doubt lingering in the back of our mind. Is it, do, do I really believe that God is going to work and move in this fashion for me? And so with that being said, uh, we're going to pick it up in Luke's gospel, the 18th verse. Now, you know, several years ago, I said it this, this way that... Uh, uh, or I heard it this way, or I saw, I, I, I was out there, uh, how can I say this, out there amongst uh, this belief uh, that and where, they, where we run faith way off in the ditch over on the right side. I mean, it got really in some quarter, some place, it got really extreme. And then uh, I recall then that they, they, uh, people, they, they being people, whomever, uh, that was asking God for, now, now keep in mind, these were people that, that, that far as I knew, uh, uh, may not even had a call of God. They were, they were children of God, might, might not have had a call of God on the line. They were saying, everybody needs to believe God for an airplane. So I remember one time they said, Brother Charles, when are you going to, Believe God for your airplane. I said, my driveway is not big enough Amen. to land it. Right. And my garage won't hold it. Right. And thirdly, I don't need it. Amen. So, you know, you can get way, way off right. in these subjects if we're not, not careful. But I don't think we have, that you have. But you can. A person can get out of bounds on it as well. Prayer is one of them. You can do that. You can get out of bounds on it. You can get out of bounds on holiness, Lord knows. I came up through some of that, not, not some of the very extreme part of holiness, but it did come up through some of that. And how many of you can remember the old, old hard line holiness teaching that was back there in some several years ago? So we want to keep it up in the middle of the road. I, remember, I, can, I can hear Dad Hagen right now saying, that, son, keep it up in the middle of the road. All right. Now, let me tell you, let me share this little story with you here. There was two men that were shipwrecked. One of them started to pray. Dear Lord, I've broken most of all, I've broken most of all of, I've, bro <laughs> I've broken most of the commandments. I've been an awful sinner all my days. Lord, if you will spare me, I'll, and suddenly the other man shouted, hold on, <laughs> don't commit yourself. I think I see a boat. Did you, are you getting my drift this, this morning? I think the moral of this little story is that we could be looking for a boat to come along and save us from the need of prayer. Amen. Amen. We could wait, you know, what's the old saying? We're waiting for our ship to come in. Amen. And you ain't even no water in your backyard. <laughs> No water in my backyard. And, and, and so we use that little phrase, you're, we're waiting for, and we know what we're talking about, that, waiting for our ship to, to, come, to come in. And so we see then in this little story, uh, he was, uh, this, this fellow, whoever he was, not only, it's probably not a true story necessarily, but this, this fellow, he, he done been pushed up against the wall, you know, and they're out there afloat and they don't know perhaps where they're at and just drifting along and he said, it's time to pray. Right. 
Well, have you ever been to a time in your life and everything's going upside down, sideways and crooked, you know, and you think, well, you know, I guess the only thing I can do is pray. As one preacher said, has it come to that? <laughs> and so I guess this, is, this would be the moral of the story uh, is that we could be looking for a boat to come along and save us from the need of prayer. So the question is, why pray? <laughs> Okay, we're going to look in Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Now, keep in mind in these words here that, as you know, that these are words that were written by people, but they were statements that Jesus himself made. Of course, we all know they're what we used to call, they may still be called the red letter edition. And all that's in the red letters are, 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 are phrases, words, thoughts that Jesus, you know, of Jesus. So he spake a parable unto them to this end. Or he spake a parable unto this end result. He spake a parable. Actually, if you read that verse of scripture and you look for it in other translations, you'll find the word end, E-N-D, is not in there. It was a word that was added by the translators. So it says, and he spake a parable unto them that men ought always to pray and not pray faint. So we've been through the, we've been through the meanings in the, in the uh, Greek and Hebrew and all of those things. But, but what, uh, what this word faint here means that, and not to become discouraged. And so all of us at some point in our life, we face uh, uh, situations and circumstances that could be discouraging to our life. Amen. Or perhaps we've been discouraged uh, with, uh, on your job. Or perhaps you could be discouraged with your business. Or you could be discouraged with some of your family. You know, it's a lot of things that people can, can be discouraged in. A lot of times we can just flat get discouraged about ourselves. Uh, about our, our, our way of thinking and so forth and so on. So, here Jesus said, he spake this parable unto them that men ought always to pray. Now here's what the word always means, not that I have to tell you, but that men, talking about people, men and women, uh, that, that people ought to always have prayer every day as a part of their continuing life here on this earth. It's a continuation word, always continuing. Have a continuous prayer Life. Not just, you know, when you're out in the boat and you're adrift and you don't see nothing out there but the water, you know, not when your back's against the wall, not when it looks like everything's failing and falling apart. No, no, no. He said that men always, he said men to this end that men are people ought always to pray. If he would have just said and men should pray, but he said they should what? always pray, always having a prayer life. And so we want to come to the place that we certainly join together with one another in prayer. We come together and unite with the uh, prayers of agreement, but we never let somebody else do the praying that we should be doing. And so we see the call to prayer is not a new one. It's not a new call. Just like apostle, prophet, those are not new callings. Those are callings that uh, Jesus gave when he ascended up on high uh, after his death, burial, resurrection, and so forth. And so here Jesus makes this call to all men. He says, spake, spake unto them this, to this end that men ought always to pray. So the call to prayer it's not a new call, but it is one of the most important things that we can do as a Christian. It is one of the most uh, uh, profitable things that we can do as a Christian. But we don't wait till we're out in the middle of nowhere and see no help in sight. We do it, what, every day. We pray all, always. So the body of Christ Looking back over my time, at least, the body of Christ has answered the call to preach the gospel in the entire world 
by sending missionaries as well as millions of dollars to all parts of the world for the gospel to be preached. People today, you know, that are called to the foreign lands, amen, they appreciate our support or your support, our support, the body of Christ's support to help them sustain them while they're there preaching the gospel. So we know this, that the body of Christ, we've answered the call to preach the gospel to the whole world by sending missionaries as well as millions of dollars to all parts of the world. We've answered the call to evangelize, but perhaps neglected to some degree the call to pray. Amen. Amen. So let's look a little, little bit further to this word faint this morning. And, uh, you, you know, if, 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 well, I started to say that, I won't say that then. So, so the, the word faint is the Greek word. I, I can't pronounce this Greek word. Uh, E-K, K-A-K-E-H-O. I, I don't know how to pronounce that word. Maybe you do, but I don't. But nonetheless, it is the Greek word uh, for this word faint that Jesus uses as the writer that, uh, that Luke uses here. We, it, it means, this word simply means, it means to be weak or to become weary. It means to become discouraged. It means to become faint-hearted. It means to lose desire for God and for the things of God. All of that's contained in that one word, faint. And folks, none of us in this room this morning are immune from the possibility that somewhere along life's way we could faint. But the, but, but the antidote for that would be what? How that men everywhere ought also always to what? To pray. That's the penicillin. Amen. That always having a prayer life works against the discouraging spirit to quit, to become faint hearted to not have a desire. All of that comes out of that word faint. So he said men ought to pray and not to faint. So we have answered the call and all of these other things we mentioned. Now let me get back to my thought here. The word faint is the Greek word. It means to be weak or to become weary. You can watch people uh, you know, you know, just watching people sometimes. You can find folks today that used to do and be this way, but they're not that way anymore. Right. They used to be involved this way, but they're not involved in that way anymore. But they never stop to think, there's some fainting going on in my life. Amen. There's some fatigue that's taking place in my life. Whatever the reason it might be for it, there is something going on in my life that is causing me to faint, to fade away, to back up, or to not do those things that I used to do in my walk with God. Prayer can be one of those things. Amen. Very easily, prayer can fit, fit into that. And so, you know, we come to church. We don't think about backing up. We come to church to learn how to go forward. And we don't want to come to church preaching on back up all the time. Right. Isn't that right? <laughs> You know, but I'm just saying that in this word faint that Jesus admonished them, all of those things can be involved in that. Now, I think it wouldn't, wouldn't do us justice if we closed our eyes and our minds and our thoughts. None of that can happen to me. I think that wouldn't, wouldn't probably a right type of thinking. Uh, so we see that, uh, that perseverance, 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 and a persistent course of prayer and the word is key to not fainting or becoming discouraged in life or with our life. I talk to a lot of people, probably you do as well, but I, first and last, over time, I talked to a lot, a lot of people and I've talked to a lot of discouraged people. I've talked to, to a lot of people through the years that said, Pastor Count, I just don't see any need to keep going. I just don't need to see a need for me to keep trying and trying and trying. They have fainted. That's right. And so we see that perseverance and a persistent course of prayer. Now, you know, a lot of times praying is not to be done as an emotional release. 
No, 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 no. But yet at the same time, a lot of times emotions gets involved in our life. And so all of a sudden we think we, we're being driven to pray because of the emotions of the moment, what we're dealing with at the moment, what's going on at the moment. Prayer should be offered to God, not out of my emotions, but out of my faith, out of my believing, out of receiving, out of doing what God has instructed me or us to do uh, in his word or from his word. And so we know that. We understand that hopefully we all do here, here to, today understand all that. So we've come to know that prayer and the word is, a, is key for strength when one feels like giving up. Now, when you feel like giving up, that thing just seems to consume you. It consumes your thoughts. It consumes you. It consumes your energy. It consumes your mental energy. It for sure consumes your spiritual energy and brings you to a place when the absence of the word and prayer is missing in my life. It drives me in that direction. It propels me in that direction. And so hope, let's look at hope. We would not just make a statement about hope without prayer is not enough by itself. Hope without prayer is not enough. It's merely wishing. Hope without prayer is not enough by itself to produce God's saving ability to rescue us in a time of trouble. So here's the thought about trouble. We don't want to dwell there too, too long this morning. Trouble comes to all of our pathway, to everybody. There's some form, some type uh, of trouble that's going to cross your path. I don't care if you believe in it or ain't, it is. Some kind of trouble is going to do it. Now, how come? How come? It's not necessarily because of what we've done. It could be, but not necessarily. It's simply because there's a tyrant. There's an outlaw that's loose in this earth and he's going to plant some problems and troubles in, in our pathway. He's going to do it. And sometimes, you know, like I said just a moment ago, it's not because we've been bad. It's not because we've quit doing this. It's just the fact that sometimes Satan is going to trouble your life. He's going to trouble your mind. He's going to do all of us that way. So we understand that, or we should. We should understand that these things will will come. And so hope without prayer and the word is not enough by itself to produce God's saving ability to rescue us in the time of trouble. How many of you want some, some uh, rescuing when trouble comes your way? How many of you want God to reach down and smack that trouble right out of the way and just get it, get it out of there? Well, we, we all do. Well, there is a way. And that way is with prayer and what? What's that? Prayer and the word. Those things are problem smackers. <laughs> Those are problem solutions. Those are trouble solutions. Now think about it just for a moment. What does the word of God tell us just very briefly about trouble? He said, I will be with you in trouble. He said, I will be with you. In, in other words, God gets in the pot with you. He gets in the trouble with you. Amen. And he's the answer to the trouble. And now he's in the middle of the trouble and has the answer to the trouble. He's in there with you. And he said, he said this. He said, I ain't going to get out either. I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to forsake you. I'm going to be in the pot or, or, or in trouble. I'm going to be in there with you and I'm going to stay there with you. Now I'm paraphrasing a little bit here and I'm going to stay in there with you until this trouble has vanished away. Hallelujah. What is my part in that? I'm not going to quit praying. I'm not going to quit reading the word. I'm not going to quit confessing the word in my prayers. I'm not going to quit reading the word. I'm not going to quit meditating the word. Trouble may be all around me, but the problem solver is not just around me. He's in me. 
I don't have to go searching for him. I don't have to go looking for him. I don't have to call you up and ask, is God close to you? No, no, no. God will rise up from the inside of you and he then will surround your life with the answers, with the power that whatever is needed where trouble is concerned, God said, I will be with you in trouble. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, in the ancient empire of Persia, we, I, you probably read about that this morning. In the ancient empire of Persia, a law was passed making it a crime punishable by death to pray to anyone but the king. You know the story. But Daniel refused to obey the order. It was his habit to what? Pray three times a day. Amen. What is your habit? What, what is my habit? Daniel's habit was to pray what? Three times daily to the one true God. He, didn't, would, he refused to pray to the king, but he prayed three times a day to, to God, to his God. As a result of him not obeying the command or the order that the king issued, even though God, uh, as a result, he was cast into a den of lions. Now, you know, if that was working for us today and we saw the lion's den and we saw them snarling, they don't, what's lions do? They don't snarl, they roar. And the lions are roaring and looking up at you, roaring, you know, like, come on, come on, you know, uh, uh, filet mignon, come on, come on. And so, uh, uh, what, what, would we, what would we do? What did Daniel, notice, notice Daniel's commitment to praying. Thank you once again for being a part of our broadcast today. I'm always grateful to know that you're there and that you're watching and that the Lord is blessing you as you receive the word of the Lord. I want to pray with you uh, before we leave today. Father, I pray for the people. I pray, Lord, that your hand of blessing, your hand of deliverance, your hand that brings good things into their lives will be upon them and that they will receive that which you have provided for them in Christ Jesus and their life will be made better because of those things that you have done and that which they have received by faith from you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Thanks again. We always appreciate you being there, as I've already said, and we'll see you next time right here on Victorious Living. You've been watching Victorious Living with Pastor Charles Cowan. It's our hope that today's message has ministered to the need you have in your life. If you would like to receive today's message in its entirety, please call 1-800-842-7896. Or if you're in the Nashville area, call 615-226-2145 and ask for the product number on the screen. Visit us online at victoriousliving.org. If you're ever in the Nashville area, come and worship with us. Sundays at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. From Pastor Cowan and the Congregation of Faith is the Victory Church, we'll be looking for you next time right here on Victorious Living.